Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 14. This tutorial we're going to build up a little bit more of our level over past the other side of this door. We're going to bring in our enemy, take a little look at animation as well as starting a tiny little bit of AI. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click the bell icon as well to stay up to date with the rest of this series and indeed everything else on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So I'd like to bring in uh, another texture, which is kind of relative to what we're building here. Uh, but what I might actually do is just expand this room a little bit more. So we've got a little bit more to work with rather than kind of the refined space that we're in. Uh, so I'm just going to kind of expand everything out a little bit, but I'm going to do it all relative. So I want this wall to be here. So I'm actually going to duplicate it, slide it to there. Take this one, duplicate it, and slide it to there. Get rid of those. So we've opened that space up a little bit. And same with this side. Obviously, this is all down to preference, how you want to build your level. Uh, but while I'm quickly doing this, what I'll explain is what we're going to do with our enemy. So the enemy itself is going to be from the asset store. And it's obviously not going to be uh, the style of enemy that you would see in Wolfenstein uh, of, of a certain dictatorship uh, simply because I don't want to risk anything on my channel. However, you don't have to do the exact same as me. You could have that sort of enemy if you wanted to. Uh, we'll play with its animation. We'll do a couple of things. We'll make it look kind of cool and, you know, we'll work with what we've got. So we've built up this area a little bit more now and I'm actually going to bring in another texture. So let's go to our textures folder and I'm going to drag and drop this wooden texture and you can get this on the website if you head over there, downloads and assets and you can get it. Uh, so I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate, rename and you know we've done all this before uh, creating the normal map. That's all I'm doing at this point. Texture type is normal map, uh, create from grayscale and apply. And let's create the wooden texture just here as we walk through the door. So let's take this wall and bring it this way to about there. Duplicate, same again, same again, uh, same again. And let's just drag it all the way across to the other side of the room. And now we can establish which uh, sections we want completely wooden. So let's drag and drop, place that onto there. So let's have it there and there. Now, there is something we have to be a little bit mindful of when we're doing this, uh, and I will show you in just a second when we've applied our uh, normal map. So let's apply the normal map to that, and let's just make sure it matches up with the other materials. So this one, for example, we have 482. So let's add 482 onto the smoothness, and albedo alpha. So let's change it to Albedo, and let's also change the normal map to point uh, 0.5, is it? Is it 0.5? It is 0.5. Now I'm looking at it now and thinking, do we have it the same? Do we need to have it the same? I'm not sure. Let's leave it like that, and let's see how it plays in our game. So, this section here is going to be all wooden. So now let's get rid of these right here. And if you look around the cube, you'll see that every direction is the exact same. Certain textures, however, do map around a little bit differently. So you just have to be slightly careful of any textures you add in because it applies it to a cube a little bit differently. For example, if we look on the bottom, it can be a little bit not skewed, but it can appear back to front. So when we're dealing with textures like the one we've got here, just be mindful that that could happen. So the reason I'm doing all this now and building up this section is because I want to place our enemy around here. So we're kind of just building up that section ready to place our enemy in. Hopefully you guys have already built up this section so you don't need to worry about it too much. I kind of maybe should have done a little bit more work on it sooner rather than leave it to this last minute. So I've built up this little area now and what you'll need to do is head to the asset store. So let's head over there 
Uh, if you don't have it there, we've already dealt with it before, but if it's disappeared, hold control and press number 9 on your keyboard and it will open up. Uh, I'm going to shop on the old store simply because I don't particularly like the layout of the new store. I feel it's a bit cumbersome. I like the simplicity of the old store. Now, we're going to look for a soldier asset because realistically, they are soldiers. So, soldier, and obviously free only because everything we do is free on this channel. And I'm going to go with this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is an asset I've used before. Uh, I like it. It's easy to use. It looks good enough for what we're trying to do. And it comes with everything we need. Uh, it is free as well. Um, credit goes to uh, the creator, not me. Uh, and just cards on the table as well. I've not been paid for any of this. This is something I've chosen because I like this asset. So if you're doing the same as me, click on import or download. Bring it into your project. <clears throat> um, simply put, we just need to import him into the game. So you'll find him down the bottom here. And in characters, soldier, and just drag and drop into the scene. I'm going to rotate him uh, 180 on the Y. And let's increase his size. Probably a bit more than that, maybe 3 by 3 by 3. And let's press play. And let's just see how tall he is in comparison to ourselves. So he does look a little tall. However, our FPS controller does appear to be, uh, or rather the camera on the FPS controller does appear to be a little small. So let's go to our first person character and let's actually bring the first person character up slightly. So we don't look so much like a child running around in the level. There we go. So, that is a little bit better now. I'm happy with that. Okay. So, everything looks good so far. I may actually bring the camera down just slightly. So, everything is in place now. It's time to look at some animations. If you notice then, our guy had an idle animation. His head was moving ever so slightly. If you go to our animations folder, you'll find a big abundance of animations, and these are really handy. These are really, really handy to use. So a couple of things that we need to keep note of first is we want our guy to be idle, but we also want him to fire his weapon at us as well. So to get that all in order, what we'll need to do is attach the fire pistol animation to our character. So if we go to uh, the actual model itself, Soldier, uh, remove all the components that are there apart from Transform, which you, know, you can't actually do that anyway because the Transform is, well, it makes him be there, doesn't it? So we need to get rid of Controller. So we can right-click, Remove Component, Remove Component, and Animator as well, Remove Component. Next thing you need to do is go to Fire One Pistol. And you'll see aiming and firing. Let's just take the firing for now. So click on it, hold control, press D. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to rename this just fire pistol. And I'm going to attach this to the enemy. So drag and drop onto soldier. And if we go on to, on, on to can't get my words out. If we go onto him now and click on the soldier controller, it'll take us here and we can see that fire pistol is now the default animation. Uh, quickly, what I want to do before we go any further is I want to check out that his firing animation does indeed perform as we expect. So if we go over here, there we go. He's firing at us. Now, although it looks fast, I want to say that we're not going to have our enemy firing its pistol that fast at us because that would just be a little bit silly. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to write a little bit of co uh, code to uh, make him kind of start looking. This is the tiny little bit of AI that I wanted to start working on because I want him to constantly look at us. Uh, you could, before we actually do that you could actually change the material on him as well to make him look a little bit different if you wanted to i'm not going to do that at this point uh, i may do when we get to the refining process but again it's entirely up to you so i'm going to leave him as he is just for now 
So, like I said, we need to make him look at us. So let's go to our scripts folder and let's right click, create, create a new folder and just call this one enemies. So anything we write on enemies is going to be in here. So right click, create C sharp script. And this is just going to be a quick line of code to make him look around. And I want to put this in a separate script because I don't want to include it in our actual AI script that we write um, next time. But this one is just going to be Luke player and open up in Visual Studio. So like I said, the basic idea of this is just to have our enemy looking at our player. So if Visual Studio is loaded up, uh, we just need to, I think it's two lines of code, I think. That's all we're going to write here. <clears throat> uh, so obviously one line of code is going to be a variable. The other line of code is going to be the actual transformation of our enemy. So, like I said, we're going to have those two animations as well. So when we finish writing this line of code, we're going to swap in the other animation, which is idle. And yeah, we should be in a good place to actually write some good AI. So like I said, uh, one variable. So let's type that out. Public. The type is going to be transform. And uh, let's have the player. We'll, we'll just call it that. Yep, transform. I thought, sorry, I thought I'd type that wrong, but I obviously haven't. Uh, so yes, let's get rid of the void star and any annotations. And what we need to do is we need to make uh, the transform and look at the player at this point. So transform dot look at and in brackets the player. Semicolon and save. Head back to Unity. And all we need to do is attach that onto the soldier. Drag and drop. And then obviously we just need to attach the player onto there. And now press play. And let's head back in there. And now he's looking at us. So it looks like he is going a little bit crazy. Now, there is a way that we can actually get around that using uh, colliders and an actual kind of marker that is on our player. So this is a good way of me showing you that yes, despite the fact he is looking whatever way, it doesn't deter from the fact that he can actually uh, go a bit crazy. As you can see, he's firing at the ceiling, which is crazy. So on the soldier itself, right here, what we need to do is if we zoom in, we actually need to go on add component and let's type in collider and we need to add a box collider around him. This will stop us walking into him. So if we press, in fact, do you know what, just to be certain with this, I'm actually going to increase the size of this uh, collider outwards. So you can see here we can change the size here. I'm going to increase it just there. And now press play. So this should theoretically work in the same way as we cannot pass through the wall. So he is firing at us still. Now although we can get close, although we can get close, he is still doing that. So we can actually work a little bit to prevent him from doing that because he is actually kind of firing at our position. If I go on to scene and click on first person controller, he's firing at a position which is kind of above our head. Now the way we can actually get around that is if we have uh, on the FPS controller. Uh, in fact, do you know what? Let's do this on the FPS character and let's see how this turns out because this is a good way of us playing around with things. So if we right click and let's go to create empty and we'll rename this as target object. And this target object is going to be slightly behind us. So if we move this backwards just a little bit, 
And on the soldier, let's now set that target object as the actual uh, variable. So we'll never actually see that. He's still firing at us. But you can see just how much that does affect it now. So changing right here in the scene, you'll be able to see real time how much of an impact that that game object is having. So that target object, can you see? We've brought it all the way down here and yet he is still firing in the correct direction. So that means that we can get to him real close and he is still going to be firing at us correctly. So that means that we need to bring our target object down just a little bit so it's in the correct place. So probably round about there. Now this object is never going to interact with any anything really. It's just merely a target object to ensure that our enemy always looks in the correct direction. Like so. Perfect. So the two final things I want to do, I've just saved my scene there. The two final things I want to do is firstly add a weapon into his hand so he has something firing rather than just pretending to play guns and sort out that idle animation as well. So let's go to the animations and I'm going to close up that and let's open up idle, hold control, press D on idle and let's drag and drop that onto the soldier. And if we go into our animator, let's now make that in fact, no, let's not make that the default just yet. Let's add the gun and make sure he fires it correctly first. Uh, for ease, I'm going to add in the gun that we already use uh, simply because, you know, why not? You can use a different gun if you want to. We need to place it in the correct hand in the correct place as well. So we just need to be mindful of where we place that. So we need to go onto the soldier's rig right here. Go to the spine. Keep going down the spine. And then we need to go on to the right. So we need to go down the right arm all the way. And then we have an object here, which is an empty game object. But that is the placing for the pistol. So drag and drop the pistol into that game object. Zero out the position. And let's also shrink it quite a lot. 0 0.06. 0 0.006, 0 point, that's too small, isn't it? 0 0.06, that's the one. 0 0.06. That's way too small. Way too small. Uh, so we just need to increase the size to fit correctly. 0 0.1, 0 0.1, nope, still too small. 0 0.4, 0 0.4, 0.4. Too big. I should have really tested this before I even try this out. 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Okay, so looks roughly about right. So now we just need to align it with his hand. So down, into place, about there. And there we go. Perfect. So the reason this actually works, and it will look like he's firing his gun, is simply because... The animation is all done through this rig here and whatever is attached will just automatically be animated along with the object that it's attached to. So if we press play now and head to our soldier, you will see him firing that gun at us. Perfect. And yeah, that's pretty much all there is for bringing in our enemy. It's kind of cool. So lastly, let's set that idle animation. So right click, set his default layer, and then let's press play and have a quick look at how he looks standing idly. Excellent. Perfect. So next tutorial, guys, we are going to start building more advanced AI. And what I mean by more advanced AI is we're going to have a point of where when he notices us, he will start attacking us. If he doesn't notice us, he won't attack. So that's going to involve uh, a couple of different things, but it's going to be a lot of fun to write that script. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.